is Zartastic and today we're going to explore the principle of design proportion and we're going to draw the attack of the snail. Let's make some art. Okay, so we're going to begin by drawing the people in the foreground and anything that we want in the foreground for our attack of the giant snail um, composition. So along the bottom, you can follow along and draw what I'm drawing, or you can make up your own foreground for your crazy landscape that you're about to draw. All right, so here we go. First, I'm going to draw the top of the hat here. And I'm just going to draw the backs of some people here. We're kind of having a hard time with this giant snail. Okay, so we're going to create a whole bunch of people and other things along the bottom. And we want them to look very, very afraid. Okay, so I got two people down at the bottom here. I think I'm going to draw three and then um, I'll add some landscape elements down here before I work on the giant snail. Okay, so maybe I'm gonna draw somebody over here who's running away. So I'm gonna give her a ponytail that's kind of blowing because she's running so fast here. Next, I'm going to add just some different landscape pieces. I'm going to add the grass. Now, this art piece is going to be dealing with a couple things. It is focusing on the element of art space in that we are going to be drawing a foreground and a middle ground and a background in our art piece. We're also 
going to be playing with proportion. 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 Yep, we're going to talk about proportion. And that is a principle of design. A principle of design that really plays with something called good proportion and bad proportion. Good proportion means that all the sizes and elements all make sense to the object. Good proportion ultimately feels right when you look at it. However, you can use that to your advantage. Generally, if I were to draw a snail in my foreground, if these were the people, the snail would be super tiny. That would make sense in real life and that would make it feel right. However, we're going to play with size and scale in this space and we're going to make the snail very large, which in real life, snails are not larger than people's. So that's going to make this snail look very scary. It's going to be the attack of the giant snail. Okay, so I got my grass along the foreground. I'm also going to add some other landscape elements. So just using some curving lines to help create some bushes. I'm also going to draw a few flowers so that the viewer could see how big a snail really should be in this art piece. That was my flower. You probably really in a proper proportion art piece, you wouldn't even see the snail. But we're gonna play with it, right? And we're not going to exaggerate the form. Okay, let's add a few, a couple more uh, flowers at the bottom. Okay, so now we need to draw the snail and the snail is going to be the focal point of this art piece. It is going to be the largest subject on our paper, which means when you look at the paper, you're going to see the snail first. Then your eyes will move around and then you'll notice that all the people are way smaller than the snail. And then whoever looks at your art piece will think, whoa, that is a giant snail. And that's the cool thing about playing with the elements of art and principle, uh, principles of design. You can really um, make your audience ask questions about what's going on in your artwork. Okay, so let's get started on drawing the snail. We're gonna start off with the shell first. And so I'm gonna have the shell about here taking up a lot of space, which means I'm gonna have the head here. So you want to make sure that you use your hands and space things out. This hand can be the shell side. This hand will be the head and body, okay? So on this side is where we're going to make the shell. It's gonna be that big. All right, we're gonna start off with a swirl for the top of the shell. Okay, so two layers, a small swirl at the top. Bring it around and connect it to the beginning. And then start from the first swirl, come out and draw a giant swooping U shape. Okay, and we're gonna do that a few more times now. Bring it out, swoop under and connect to the top. Okay, two more times. Okay. Now that we got the basic shell done, we're gonna add some texture lines in there. Just like that. You can even add some other elements like circles for some design patterns. Whatever makes you happy. And this detail just add interest to your artwork. Okay, we got a cool shell. Now we need to draw a snail. We're gonna start off by drawing some snail eyeballs. Snail eyeballs are weird. They're not really attached to the body like people eyeballs. 
Okay, so two circles, and in each circle you're going to draw another circle. Then we're going to draw some ovals. Oh dear. There we go, some ovals in each of those other circles. And then you're gently going to color that smaller circle in the larger circle, but not color the oval. Okay, we got some eyeballs, but this isn't a crazy, weird, giant snail, so we need to add kind of these like weeping, drooping eyelids to make it extra nasty and add a fleshy rim to that. Oh yeah, already this guy is gonna be super creepy, which is wonderful. Okay, from the creepy eyeballs. Two lines down. Okay, then between the eyes, draw a smaller line. Next, bring the head down, connect it to the shell. And then we're gonna draw the mouth, okay? So we want to have a curving line along the top. We're going to add little arrow shapes on either end for the corner of the mouth. Draw a giant U. Along the bottom, draw zigzag lines for massively sharp teeth and do the same along the top. Cool. Now in the inside of the mouth, I want you to draw the letter M. And that is going to create a tongue for your giant man-eating snail. Okay, so we're gonna carefully color the inside of the mouth, being careful not to color those wonderful white teeth you have drawn. Perfect, we got a mouth. Now we need to add some slimy drool on the mouth. Oh yeah. Next. We're gonna draw the rest of the body. So I'll bring it down and connect. And most of the body is gonna be hidden behind the foreground here. And then we'll continue it out the back. Okay, so we got a giant snail body. You can go ahead and add some texture lines around your body. I'm just using a whole bunch of hatching lines or dashed lines, just short, short little segments there. Finally, we're gonna draw a background and we're gonna draw some trees. I'm gonna do some evergreens with some zigzag lines. And that's just gonna show that this guy is so big, he's bigger than some Douglas firs. Giant, giant snail. And if you want in the sky, you can just simply add some clouds. Perfect. Okay, so our snail is done being designed and now we're going to move on to coloring it. Okay, so we're gonna color the snail that focuses on the principle of design proportion. I'm gonna color it with felt markers and I'm going to do highlights and lowlights with uh, my black and white pencil crayons, but feel free to use whatever coloring mediums you have available to your at your home, whether it's uh, 
wax crayons, felt markers, oil pastels. You pick what you have and let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start on the shell. What color do I wanna use? Okay, we're gonna do brown, brown shell, and I'll add some parts that are yellow on top. You can go ahead and color the same colors that I'm coloring or feel free to use your imagination and do whatever you want.
Okay, I'm just gonna go around some of the lines on the body with a brown. You can use a brown or a blue or a purple and you're just gonna go over some of the lines to make them stand out a bit more. Not all of them, but just some. And this will also create some great texture. Cool. Okay, so let's play with some highlights and lowlights with um, a white and a black pencil crayon. And then I'm gonna color the rest of this guy with some wax crayons because I have more uh, wax crayons and colors than I, uh, sorry, I have more colors in wax crayons than I do in uh, felt markers. So let's get started. We're gonna start off with the white highlighting first and we're going to simply color with our white anywhere there should be some highlights. So we're gonna do on the gently color in a circle along kind of like the top middle part of all the stripes or swirls of the shell. We're gonna highlight, we're gonna highlight around the face and give all these ooey gooey bits some highlights as well. Can also add highlights on the tongue. And in the mouth. and then down the body. Next, we're gonna do the shadows. So along the bottom and under side of the swirls, we're gonna add some shadows. So that line that separates the top and the bottom of each of the swirling parts on the shell or sections on the shell, we're gonna add some shadows. We'll shade the face as well. So underneath the eyeballs. The tongue. Underneath all that ooey gooey drool.
where the shell connects the body. We want to add a, a nice dark shadow along there because the shadow will be casting a sorry the shell will be casting a shadow onto the body. And then along the bottom of the body where the body meets the foreground. So our snail is mostly done. Before we move on to the rest of the landscape, I got some curling paper. There we go. Before we move on to the rest of the landscape, I'm just going to take my blue crayon, or you could use a wax, sorry, a pencil crayon. You're just going to add some blue in the eyes there. Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to finish off the landscape now and you can color it with whatever you want, however you want, whatever makes you happy.
If you're wondering what that noise is, I keep my crayons in a coffee tin because I hate putting them back into those boxes. <laughs> That's a home tip for you. Okay, last thing we gotta do is color your sky. And already you can see that this illustration is starting to come to life. Well, Artastic Nation, um, your art piece that focuses on the uh, principal design proportion featuring the attack of a snail is now done. Artastic Nation, that's the end of this episode. Tune in every Tuesday evening for the premiere of the next episode. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. For more art tutorials, visit my blog at MsArtastic.com. Teachers! Find my creative, high-quality art resources in my TPT store, Ms. Artastic. Finally, you can receive free art worksheets for kids by joining my newsletter by simply clicking the first link in my video description. All links are available in the description of this video. See you next time.